Good morning, all. The other day I uh, soldered a wire to a neodymium magnet uh, in order to make a battery connector, a sort of quick release battery connector. So the idea is that uh, that just clips on there. But soldering, and I was warned about this by uh, commenters, so thanks very much to people who comment, uh, said don't solder to a magnet because you'll destroy the magnetism. And in, indeed some something a bit strange has happened. It seems weaker generally, but also it doesn't quite seem to want to centralise. It's as though the magnetic field has been, I don't know, moved in some way. And I said in that video, wouldn't it be nice if there was some sort of visualisation thing so that I could see the magnetic field? And once again, uh, commenters came to the rescue and said, well, yes, you can get this visualisation film. So I bought some and here it is. It's magnetic visualisation film. It's sort of green and a bit mottled looking. And I'm going to start visualising some magnetic fields. But before I do that, let's just see uh, where this came from. I bought it from a UK seller because I wanted to get it quite quickly. Um, I think this was £6 for a two inch square piece of film. But let's take a look at it on eBay. So, yes, this was uh, £5.95, uh, free shipping, and it came from Magna Metals, and that's a UK seller. Uh, so this is described as magnetic field viewer film. Uh, it's 60 by 60 millimetres, two inches plus, genuine green film. And uh, if I go through these images, you can see how the film responds to uh, the fields around magnets, but it doesn't look like the sort of uh, image you get if you sprinkle iron filings on a piece of paper. So, uh, interesting. Now, the seller says here, uh, magnetic field viewing film is used to show stationary or less often slowly changing magnetic fields. It shows their location and direction. It is a green, translucent, thin, flexible sheet coated with micro capsules containing nickel flakes suspended in oil. When magnetic lines of force are parallel to the surface of the carrier sheet, the surfaces of the flakes are reflective and appear bright. When lines of force are perpendicular to the sheet, the flakes are edge on and appear significantly darker. Now, that doesn't make much sense. And you're probably thinking, well, just get on with it. Let's have a look at what it looks like. Um, but there are a few things here that are important. Um, when the film is placed on the magnet's pole, the latter case applies. In other words, it will show dark. Uh, yes, most of the area pole appears dark. Now there's all this stuff about magnetic magnets attached to each other and blah de blah de blah. Um, but it says the film cannot be used for AC electromagnets as it will not show rapidly changing magnetic fields. I guess that's because the flakes are suspended in this oil and can't oscillate at 50 hertz or thereabouts. Uh, it also cannot be used distinguish, to distinguish between north and south poles. Uh, you also can't see the very small variations on magnetic tape or the magnetic strips on the backs of credit cards. But anyway, without uh, any further reading, let's take a look at what you can see. Now, I'm having some difficulty filming this because um, it's slightly see-through, this thing, because I believe the micro capsules are spaced a little way apart. So you can see silhouettes uh, through it, or shadows, I suppose they are. No, they're not even that, really, are they? Just the way the light is being blocked. So I'm going to put this on a black background so that there's no light coming through from behind. See if that helps. Right, I found this uh, tool holder thing. Um, now that seems to have eliminated most of the, um, the shadow, the sort of blocking of the light from behind. I am getting some reflection and there's a shiny side uh, here, which of course will reflect the window. There is also a matte side, quite a heavily mottled matte side so maybe that will work better from a, a video perspective but uh, let's get one of those neodymium magnets and just take a look at what uh, that looks like on this film so here's one of the magnets uh, attached to the end of my screwdriver now i know that that will slightly alter the field but let's just uh, give that a try and what it looks like is a dark patch which the uh, description on eBay said it would, 
but surrounded by a light halo. Now, if I put it against the film, and it does actually stick to the film ever so slightly, I suppose that's because of the nickel flakes in it, then you've got the dark patch surrounded by a very fine halo, white halo or green halo. If I'd move it away a little bit, that halo uh, softens out. So that's what a neodymium magnet, a brand new one, unsoldered, looks like. But that's not really telling me much about the lines of flux. It doesn't look, like I say, like um, it would look like if you had uh, iron filings on a piece of paper. So let's now switch to just a regular bar magnet and see what that looks like. So here's a bar magnet. Um, it's this kind of ferrite material. I'm not quite sure what this is made of. Um, it's a very weak magnet. It's not very strong, but let's take a look at what that looks like. And it looks like that. It looks like two dark areas with a light area in between. Let's try and get that a bit closer to the film. Yeah, so two dark areas with a light area in between and possibly some light halos emanating from the ends. Let's just try that the other way around. Oh yes, that looks a bit sharper. Now the uh, description on eBay said that it couldn't distinguish between North and South Poles. And I know that this magnet has a North Pole at one end and a South Pole at the other. So certainly the two poles look dark. But that light area in between, I guess that must be where the transition occurs between north and south. And so there is in effect no magnetization in that area in between. Let's just turn that over. The uh, transition line appears ever so slightly wiggly. I'm not quite sure why. Now I've got another one of these. Let's take a look at that. And this one's really weird because it's got two transition lines, it would appear. Let's flip it over a quarter turn. So this seems to have, I don't know, maybe a south pole in the middle and two north poles at each end. I'm not sure why it's like that. But that certainly seems to be what it looks like. Now, if that were the case, then it should stick to this magnet on both ends. And in fact, it does, that's really weird. So does the other end of this repel that? No, that, oh, sort of, that sort of seems to stick. But uh, yeah, these are really strange magnets. I'm not sure that that's really telling me much. Let's get another bar magnet. Okay, here, so here's a very similar magnet. It's made of that sort of compressed ferrite material. Uh, powder, I suppose, that's been compressed. And that's very similar. You've got the two uh, poles at each end and this white transition line between the two. Let's just turn that over. Yep, so that's fairly consistent on all four sides. So that's what a regular bar magnet looks like. You can't distinguish between the north and south poles, but you can very easily see the center section, presumably where the um, magnetism goes to zero, I suppose. I don't really know, but that's what that looks like. Okay, let's take a look at another magnet. In fact, let's go back to the neodymium. So going by what uh, we saw on those bar magnets, what it appears is that uh, one of the poles is on one of these flat faces and the other pole is on the other flat face. And that transition line, if I turn the magnet on its side, you can see that transition, very thin line sandwiched between the North Pole, if that is indeed the North Pole. This magnet is so powerful, it's sticking to the film. And uh, the other pole, which also looks black, but the line between the two poles looks white and is very fine and sharp. Now, whereas one neodymium magnet has a very fine white halo around it. Uh, five neodymium magnets in a stack, the halo isn't quite as sharp. And that, it would appear, is because if you put this stack on its side, you've got a white line sort of 
part way down the stack doesn't seem to be exactly in the middle which is slightly odd it seems to be biased towards that that one end oh wait a minute maybe this is just an angling problem I can't quite get the angle right but certainly that transition between north and south pole is part way down the um, the group of magnets so it's been positioned it's acting like one magnet and the transition between north and south pole is part way down and that means that it's slightly further away uh, from the edge when I'm looking at it face on which means which possibly explains why it's uh, a little less sharp when we're looking at it end on now I've got another, another magnet here it's another one of these sort of uh, pressed powder magnets and I've actually been using it to sort of clear this off a bit like uh, etch a sketch because it's just a very big broad magnet and if I just swirl it over the top it kind of clears off any patterns that are on here if I create a pattern it's hard to do because uh, yeah so there's a bit of a white splurge there I can just eliminate that with this now this magnet's interesting in its own right because this one appears to be more like the neodymiums in that one of the faces one of the poles is on the large face and the other one's on the other large face so they both look black and then if you look at it from the side you can see that transition line between the, the two sections but there are some distortions on this let me uh, set it up and get a little bit closer in if I look at this magnet edge on to look at this uh, separation line it's by no means a, an absolutely straight line I mean there's a really obvious zigzag there where this line between the two poles and there's no feature visible on the side of the magnet but very definitely it seems to head off head back and then head off again so that's really weird the way this has been magnetized it's just not completely linear or smooth it's quite jaggy and if I look at this magnet uh, one of the faces so one of the poles there again are some really weird distortions up here it seems that this sort of transition line between the poles isn't right at the end of the magnet it's a little way in from the edge so these magnets are not sort of perfect as you might imagine they would be right so what we really want to see now of course is what happened to the magnet that I soldered to uh, what happened to the magnetic field of that well let's take a look and that happened so you can see that there's a cut out a bit like the uh, the bite in the uh, Apple logo and that corresponds exactly with where the solder is let's look at it from the other side it won't be as distinct because I won't be able to get it flat on but there's definitely either a loss of magnetization where that solder uh, that solder point occurred so either a loss of magnetization it's hard to tell because both poles look black and the transition line between the poles looks white so has that area where I soldered actually inverted and we're seeing the other pole there or has it just become non-magnetized it's actually quite hard to tell but yes certainly this visualization material makes it very clear that where I soldered uh, there is a big disturbance in the magnet magnetization of this magnet so uh, yeah big thanks to everyone who suggested I get some of this um, magnetic visualization film it does make it very easy to see what happened to this magnet after I uh, soldered a wire onto it basically it took a big chunk out of the uh, magnetization of this neodymium magnet cheerio